um, mag 2024 vir julle allemaal absolute jaar van overflow wees. Ek is Petrolien van die Seepuis en ek help bezig jyre om hulle seep business te accelerate. Um, mens hoor baie keer, vooral in die Facebook seep groepe hoor jy baie keer dat ouwens is geskok as jy binnen een jaar uh, jou seep wil verkoop. Maar daar is absoluut geen rede om jy dit nie kan doen nie. Jy hoef nie vir 10 jaar seep te maak om een business van die grond op te kry nie. So, dit is my goal. Um, so in today's episode, we are going to talk about lie and water and lie solution. Uh, there's a lot of things going on around in groups and I, and a lot of the things that I do see in Facebook groups are things that be, a person were taught, they don't know why they were taught that and they just pass that information on to the next person and to the next person. And I've come to realize, like, I guess in most of these groups, they, even though the information is not um, 100% wrong, or um, it's not necessarily always 100% correct because people start to add their own spin on it. Um, they start to interpret information differently and then pass that on to somebody else. And you know the whole thing about then the original message is not the same as the current message message at all. In today's episode, I'm going to break down lie in soap making. So in order to make cold process soap, which is what we will discuss and what I discuss on my channel, you need a substance we call lie. Also referred to um, as caustic soda, also referred to as sodium hydroxide, um, especially those two if you buy or if you search on chemical websites for, for the um, product. Also referred to as drain cleaner, although it's not 100% correct always because drain cleaner can um, contain acidic compounds. It also contains surfactants, solvents, corrosion inhibitors. So drain cleaner does not always, for the most part, only consists of caustic soda. But people do talk about drain cleaner. And then when people hear you make soap with drain cleaner, everybody gets freaked out. But that's that's not like completely true. So, and then also called in Afrikaans, for my Afrikaans audience, seep soda. As jy a recipe het van jou ou ma, gaan jy sien seep soda is op die recipe en dit is wat caustic soda is of laai is. Dit is alles die soda. When we make soap, we need an alkali solution that we can mix with oils and that process then creates a chemical reaction or, or putting the two together um, creates a chemical reaction we call saponification and I'll talk about saponification in a separate video um, but that's essentially the chemical reaction that takes place you cannot make soap without that chemical reaction now what you use as an alkali I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but at, as long as it is a strong base, therefore, you could potentially make, and a lot of people in Africa still make soap with wood ash, where they strain wood ash, uh, they, they, they burn a fire, take the wood ash, strain the water through the wood ash, and then also make a strong alkali or a strong base from that. So if somebody tells you you can only make soap with caustic soda, it's not true. You can make it with something like wood ash, but but in the big scheme of things, you need a strong alkali to 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 um, instigate that drink. Now, what we do in soap making is when we use lye, which will normally come in white flakes, we by mixing in, mixing it or dissolving it in water, we actually strengthen that strength of the alkali by doing that. The dissociation of the caustic soda will, in the water, will create two ions. That's gonna be, we, we do a little bit of science here today as well. Two ions, you're gonna get a sodium positive ion and you're get a, going to get an hydroxide negative ion. That hydroxide ion is what we need for the chemical reaction with the oil for the saponification. So that's why we dissolve the caustic soda in a liquid. 
All right. So that so and I want to share this information with you because if you know this, you can you can figure things out pretty much for yourself in terms of why do you want to dissolve the lie in and why does something not dissolve and um whatever. But 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 the basis of it all is you do want to dissolve the lie in a liquid. All right. When working with lye or caustic soda, as some might know it, it is important to follow safety guidelines. And by mixing it with the appropriate amount of water, that, that's one of those safety guidelines that you do absolutely want to follow. You often hear people would say you have, need one molecule of water to bind with one molecule of lye. Absolutely must be. Otherwise, yes. It's partially true, but at the end of it, and I'm going to explain to you now why, it's, you want to do that for safety reasons. And here's why maintaining that ratio between the lye and the water is so crucial. Lye is a highly caustic substance. It can cause, cause burns on your skin and irritation on your skin. But when we mix it with water, and we call that an exothermic um, uh, process, a reaction, it's the word I'm looking for. We call that an exothermic reaction. It means that it will generate heat as part of that chemical reaction, like in science class. Science class. Uh, some chemical reactions created heat, some don't. But it's really that heat that can also be dangerous. So having enough water to dissolve your lye in can control that process of how much heat is released um, during that chemical reaction. The second reason why we do want to make sure we have a one-to-one -one ratio when we mix the lye with a liquid or with water, it I did say it dissolves better in water. An insufficient amount of water can actually prevent the solution from some of these, for some of these um, caustic soda flakes, and you can end up with pockets of caustic soda or lye solution in your soap. Now, that is what we would then call a lye-heavy soap. You have these concentrated pockets of lye in soap. Now, just to clarify one thing about a lye-heavy soap. If you followed a recipe that you ran through a soap calculator, you followed all your measurements, everything is correct, your scale works correct, you followed the correct soaping process, you cannot end up with a lye-heavy soap. It's, it's just impossible. <laughs> it's just, you cannot. If you end up with a lye heavy soap, you've made a mistake somewhere through the process, the manufacturing process. Um, so you then that's what you need to go and troubleshoot is where did you went wrong in your, your manufacturing process. Many times people did forget to add the right amount of water or they did forget to add an oil. So something around that. But but just know that you just by if you follow the correct process, you cannot you Technically speaking, it's impossible to end up with a lie heavy soap. So, so that's why one of the reasons we do want to make sure that we at least at minimum have that one-to-one -one ratio with lye and water or liquid. As I've mentioned, number three, as I've mentioned, when we do mix lye with a liquid, it will generate heat. And in part to control that heat, we want to mix it with enough water, but also we can control that heat if that heat is especially if you work in big batches as well, that heat can be extremely dangerous and the solution that heats up can be extremely dangerous and that can splash on you and on your skin. And we want to prevent that. So by having enough water or having enough liquid in your solution, we can more or less control that. The fourth reason why we do want to sort of maintain that one-to-one -one ratio for lye is that maintaining a one-to-one -one one -one ratio provides control over the process and it ensures that the lye will dissolve uniformly throughout the solution. Um, and you can be pretty sure if there's nothing sticking to the bottom of the container, um, you have mixed it throughout the cool-down phase, that your lye solution is um, dissolved. I cannot talk about lye without talking about safety precautions when you are working with lye and water and the lye solution. You would do want to wear um, eye safety protection because you do not want that uh, solution or any lye for that matter to splash into your eyes. As I've mentioned, 
it can cause chemical burns. So you do not want a chemical burn in your eye, right? So always wear um, eye goggles, something to protect your eyes. You do want to wear a mask, especially if you are not able to work, to, to work in a well-ventilated area. You can work close to a window, you can open window, you can work in a space where there are um, good ventilation. You can also work outside. Um, but if you are not in a space where that's possible, I do know that a lot of soap makers start their soap business in their apartment. Um, then just make sure you open windows that you can open and make sure that you work in smaller batches. You don't want to mix a 5,000 5, gram batch in one go. So you can just work at smaller, at smaller um, batches. Also wear hand protection, wear some gloves, wear an apron. If the stuff splashes on your clothes, it will leave marks on your clothes. And you can keep pets and children, keep them away in the area where you are working with lye. Um, because even if you are careful, some of the lye flakes can spill on the ground as you are as you're measuring things out. Your pets can come and pick it up, lick it up and, and things like that. And you obviously don't really want that. And also for kids' sakes, you want to keep small kids out of the area. Always run your soap recipe through a lye calculator. A lot of us make soap, so people start out making soap from a recipe book. It's great. It's, it's a great place to start. I always encourage people that want to start out is buy a soap kit that um, you get everything. You don't have to spend a ton on um, ingredients and a ton on equipment and things like that. Just sort of get your, wet, your feet wet with a soap kit. Um, but as you progress, you do one of the first things you do want to do is learn how to formulate your own recipe. And I've spoken about that in a previous video, and I'll speak about how you can do that. But you do that by using a soap calculator, which will then calculate your lye, your water, and everything out for you exactly the way you need it. Always add lye to the water not the other way around. Um, people talk about big explosions and big stuff. It's not, it's not, it's not like you cannot not do it, but it's much safer to add the lye to the water. You can control how much lye you scoop out for your solution every single time. It's much harder to control if you have a, a, a bucket of lye. When you pour your water in, it's easier to sort of like just pour the whole jug into the um, container. And that will generate that chemical reaction much faster. It can bubble over. It can give off heat, um, significant heat in, in one go. So that's just for safety reasons that you always want to make sure that you add your lye flakes and your lye to the water because it's much more controllable to do it that way. When you do buy lye at a shop, make sure it is at least 99% um, pure. You are going to, like I said, you are going to get lye or caustic soda at the shop that might be labeled caustic soda, but it's really drain cleaner. It contains a lot of other things in there as well, which is not suitable for soap making. You would be able to find caustic soda at your local DIY store. You would be able to find caustic soda at a chemical store, online chemical store. Especially as you scale up your business, you might want to start to get into contact with the chemical store because they can eventually actually mix your life for you when you start a master batch, which we'll talk in about um, later on. And then you can also find your lie from a reputable soap uh, supplier uh, or distributor of soap equipment and soap ingredients. I hope that was useful. Thank you so much for joining. If you find these videos useful, please remember to subscribe to my channel. That will help my channel to grow and get the message, message out to more people. Um, as we really want to help you to accelerate your business, get up and running as soon as possible. You don't want to struggle, if you, if you, especially if you know you're going to go into business. You do not want to struggle a year to sell a single soap. So my only aim is really to help you from a business perspective to get up and running sooner. Um, if, there are, if you have any comments, please drop them in the comment section below. If there are any topics you want me to cover, especially around soaping and business, uh, drop them in the comments below as well and let me know. I'll see you later. Bye.